Well, there may be big snowflakes flying around outside, but it is April, so we're all thinking spring. While we are a little more than a month away from our safe growing window, there's plenty that we can do now to prepare for our spring gardens. And Emily Swihart from the Illinois Extension Office joins us now. As always, Emily, we thank you for joining us here on Quad Cities Live. Happy to be here. Yeah, we're hoping hoping spring comes pretty soon. <laughs> I believe me when I say we can start doing some stuff outside of the yard. But yeah, and let's get the consistent spring weather. Let's yeah. get a, a good balance between the dry, the warmth, and the rain. But today we're focusing on cool season plants and then how we can get our gardens ready now for our warm season. Yeah. So April, like this, kind of kicks off the season. Like yeah. we're ready to go. Oh yeah. And so you can actually start planting things here. Okay. So there are cool season crops and yes. then there are warm season crops. Okay. You want to hang off, like hold off on the warm season crops. Those mm -hmm. would be, um, we're too early for that. Yeah. But we can plant things like what we've got here. So okay. we've got flowers you can start putting in your landscape. Yeah. Yep. Um, violas or pansies is another name that you would know them by. Okay. Coming in a, a variety of colors. On this side of the table, we've got snapdragons. Snapdragons okay. are cool season crops as well. So you can just bring more color into your landscape yeah. and that can help you transition from the bulbs into our um, summer, summer blooming plants. And then edibles. So we've got um, vegetable crops you can start putting in your garden right now okay. um, that are cool season. So the first of these would be things like your broccolis and your kales. And then later in a couple of weeks, um, beginning of May, okay. let's just say beginning of May, then All you right. can start putting in um, some of your um, half hardy cool season crops, okay. which would be things like your um, your leaf lettuces, your um, carrots, your beets, your um, radishes. So one thing that we might want to hold off on doing right now is getting those tomato plants in yeah. the ground. It, it's too <laughs> soon for that, too cool for that, it's, uh, because like you said, you'll, you'll have to do a little TLC yourself if you do that right now. Yeah, so they are popping up in garden centers. Okay. And it's so tempting. Like Very You want to be the first yes. one that yes. has a tomato. <laughs> They're, they're very sensitive to, to cold temperatures and we're okay. still having those. Sure, and so yeah. we want to wait until after our frost-free date, which is mid-May. Sure, sure. Um, when we have significantly reduced the risk of frost in our sure. area. If you buy them now, you need to put them under grow lights. Windows are going to make them stretch and kind of mm -hmm. ruin them. Um, you're going to need to give them some nutrients. So my advice would be to let garden centers do that for you. Just hang on um, a few weeks and then you can go buy them and sure. plant them outside. So mid-May, we always uh, always talk about in the, in, the, in the weather department, it's usually Mother's Day thereafter yeah. is when you can start to safely put things in the ground because we're getting farther and farther away from that frost date and hopefully yes. late May we don't get a, like a 20 degree temperature or something like that. Yep. So what yep. we can also start doing now is cleaning up our gardens. Yes. They're yeah, this messy. is, yep, they are. <laughs> they are. Hopefully people left some um, twigs and, and branches like staying in the garden for sure. the pollinators. Yeah. You can start pulling those out. Um, so what you're going to want to do is start raking. Plants are starting to emerge, so be gentle about yes. raking things out, but you can start, you know, removing that debris, applying fresh layers of mulch to make it look really nice. Yeah. Um, you can start um, caring for those bulbs, those spent bulbs. So I brought yeah. some of my daffodils in. Yeah. Uh, we want to leave the foliage. So the foliage does look like this. It's just kind of a uh, lanceolate greenery. leaf. Yep, yeah. Mm -hmm. You want to leave that because that's going to feed your bulbs. It's going to continue to do photosynthesis. Okay. So leave this for a while until it starts to turn yellow, and then you can remove it. All right. Um, but what you do want to do, first I recommend harvesting the, the blooms to enjoy inside. Yes, If absolutely. you leave them in your landscape and they start looking kind of like this, they're spent. Take these out still because okay. these are going to develop into seed heads, which takes energy from the bulbs. So just okay. remove those and leave the leaves on all of your spring bulbs, tulips, daffodils, all of, the, all of them. Okay. So leave those in the garden for a little bit longer, but a um, couple of different garden tasks. All right, there you go. Yeah, bring, bring them in and, and brighten, up, brighten up your indoors right yeah. now. Yeah. So uh, April is National Arbor Month, so we yeah. want to make sure that we're taking care of our trees. We've got Earth Day coming up as well, so that's top of mind. So let's talk about tree care. Yes. Yep. So um, April is Arbor Month. We're mm -hmm. going to have celebrations. Um, we've got a class coming up here that people can go and learn more about tree care. Okay. We want to start removing things from our trees. So we, uh, this was from my tree. Yeah. Many okay. folks have had trees wrapped, mm -hmm. um, park the trunks protected. Take these off. Please take these off. Because what these do in the winter is protect the trunks from rodent damage. Sure. In the winter, in the summer months, they can trap moisture and heat inside, which is really, can be damaging oh, sure. for, for tree trunks. So take these off. You can see these images here. One's wrapped in burlap. That's probably an evergreen. Take that off. Things are starting to break bud and need to have um, access to the sunlight. You can also apply mulch. 
Mm -hmm. I was going to say we need some water on those trees, but <laughs> I think we're good for now. Yeah, I think we're good. We got plenty of that over <laughs> yeah, the last few days. I think we're okay water-wise. <laughs> um, but you can start caring for trees in that way. It's oftentimes, I, I like to tell people to plant trees in April. It's a really yeah, good time to plant okay. trees, except this year. So I would like to recommend people hold off on planting new trees this year because we have the periodical cicadas oh, coming. Oh, yes, that's right. And There's we'll supposed talk to be like a billion or a trillion or something like that. Something yeah. like that. that yes. uh, I'm not exaggerating. It's yeah. We're going to have a lot. Yeah. We'll have, <laughs> have a lot of cicadas, okay. and they lay their eggs in um, the, the bark of small twigs on trees oh, and so okay. if you plant new trees they're often small sure. in size so I would just recommend holding off all until right. after they've emerged and so we'll talk all about cicadas in May I was gonna say that's getting closer yeah. to cicada time so yes. yeah we'll have a lot yeah. to talk about next month that's for sure well if you want more information or tips for the upcoming horticultural events if you want to take a look at those there's many workshops and webinars as well you can visit extension.illinois.edu Emily as always thanks for joining us and we look forward to talking to you next month my pleasure and hopefully we'll be uh, well into getting close to that garden.